Hey, it's me, MLB. Here's chapter 149 of Gains, and this one is titled, A Rocky Start. After the auntie had paid, you all walked through the ticket gate and turned to wave goodbye to her. Shinaru, are you going to say bye? You asked, the still hiding little bundle in your arms, and she shook her head, still with her forehead pressed into your chest. Bye, you called to the auntie, adjusting Shinaru in your arms so you could wave goodbye with your other hand. Is she okay? Kiri asked, seeing that the little girl didn't want to lift her head up from you. <sighs> yeah, you sighed. Daddy over here said some mean things and she doesn't want to look at him now, you said, shooting the daddy in question a dirty look. She was staring at me, he pouted in a gruff voice. She's two, you deadpanned. That's what two-year-olds do. Bakugo clicked his tongue to the inside of his cheek, but didn't say anything else. Low-key, he was feeling bad that he had upset her. Anyway... You said in a bright voice. Let's go and see if we can find some fun things to do, hey? Look at this place. I know, right? I have a map here, Kiri said as he pulled it out of his back pocket. The little kids pulls over this way. Let's go there first. Sounds good, you said, doing a little jump to hoist Shinaru up your body a little. Let's go. Kiri turned and oriented the map and then led the way through the crowds of people, walking across the water park to get to the kids section over the back. Surprisingly, it wasn't as busy over there and was also fenced off, so you let yourselves in the gate and looked around for a place to sit. Um, Shinaru, where would you like to sit? You asked the still shy bundle who kept her face hidden. Bakugo stepped up beside you and pointed to a giant pink flamingo on the inside edge of the pool that had water pouring down from under it and you looked over at it. There, there's a place on the grass there and it's shaded by that tree, he said. Oh, it is, that's a really nice spot. Thank you, cat. I mean, daddy, you said, turning your head to him and kissing him on the shoulder. He smirked proudly, and Kiri looked across from your other side. Um, am I daddy too? He asked in a voice that told you he was already feeling a little left out. Of course, daddy, you replied to him, and he grinned brightly. I, I like that, he said with a shy chuckle. Okay, let's get set up and then we can get this little miss in the water, hey? You said to her, but still no response. You held on to her while Bakugo and Kiri set up the picnic rug and other items and then you slipped your sandals off and stepped onto the mat and sat down. She cuddled into you and refused to move, so you sighed and looked at your boys. <sighs> I think this might take some time, you said sadly. Well, I'm hot, Bakugo said, grabbing his shirt and throwing it off over his head to reveal an absolutely chiselled set of abs and thick chest and cut arms. It's like the good lord himself had taken all the most perfect sculpted body parts and put them together on this man, and you just stared, along with Kiri too, who had his eyes glued to the blonde. Bakugo ignored you both thirsting over him and walked down to the water's edge and then splashed some water on himself. Well, I'm having a good time, you said in a dreamy voice as you watched your blonde boyfriend splash water on himself. Same, Kiri said from beside you, and you looked at him and chuckled. <laughs> Look at us, both thirsting over our man, you chuckled. Yeah, he replied back, chuckling as well as he reached his hand up to return the high five that you had initiated by holding your hand up first. Shinaru finally pulled her head from your chest, then when she realised that Bakugo had walked away and shyly looked over her shoulder to see where he was. Bakugo had stopped splashing himself now and was intently looking at something in the water. You and Kiri had no idea what he was looking at until a random spurt of water came shooting out of the shallow pool and got him right in the face, and that's when you realised it was a submerged water jet. You and your red-headed boyfriend burst into laughter at Bakugo trying to fight this thing, and even Shinaru started giggling as she watched him in his futile efforts. Do you want to go in the water with me? You asked her, and she looked from Bakugo to you and nodded her head. Okay, we need to put floaties on you then, and some more sunscreen, you added, getting her set up to go in the water. After you had her ready, you reached for the sides of your dress and pulled it off, throwing it down on your bag and taking her hand in yours. Okay, we'll be back in a bit, you said to Kiri, who was looking at you with a blush on his cheeks, and you paused. What is it? you asked, looking down your front. Oh, n nothing. You just look really good in that swimsuit, Yin, he said, trying not to look too much. Oh, thanks. This was from Momo. My other one wasn't fitting nicely, you said. She had so many swimming outfits in her room, so she let me choose two, which is really lovely of her, you said. It looks amazing, he said again. You smiled and thanked him once more, and then headed down to the water's edge while holding Shinaru's hand. She was quite excited to get into the water, and the temperature was lovely, so you were in the shallows within seconds, and she was happily splashing around in the water. It was while you were standing there that Bakugo looked up and saw you and stepped into the water to come over. 
Where'd you get that outfit from? He asked slowly. I got it from Momo, he said. Do you like it? I like it too much, he replied, his eyes flicking to your cleavage before finding your face again. Go and change. No, thank you, he replied airily as you stuck your nose in the air playfully. This is payback for you just walking around without a shirt on looking fine. You look better than I do, he growled. Anyway, I'm here to play with Shinaru, daddy. So if you're not going to play, then you can go and sit with your other boyfriend and watch me, he said with a smirk. What are you playing? He asked. She's doing her own thing. You both looked over to see that she had wandered over to a turtle sculpture in the water and had almost reached it by now and was about to climb on it, but she was currently wading under a water bucket that was suspended overhead. Bakugo had seen the bucket hanging and noted that it had been filling with water and was about to tip and dump the water out and knew that if he didn't act fast she was going to get swamped with this water. So without saying a word he turned and ran over, scooping her up in his arms and flinging himself out of the way just as the bucket let go, his left arm copping the downpour as he leapt to the right. Daddy saves the day! I mean, back you go, but hey, we're calling him Daddy for the time being. Stay tuned for chapter 150 coming tomorrow. Incidentally, this book goes up to chapter 154, so we've only got a few more chapters and then we're done. Some people are happy, some people are sad, you know, can't please anyone. But then we'll have another book coming up directly after, as I usually do. So, without further ado, I'll see you tomorrow for chapter 150.